Armed Antics here. So Anthem is into its public demo, and most of you had the chance to try it out for yourselves. It's a small part of the game, but it's a good reflection of what to expect. However, for this video, I've scrubbed through over eight hours of full game footage recorded from Japan thanks to EA Game Changers in order to find out little nuggets of information and interesting scenes to keep your beaks wet before the full release. I know how ravenous you are for information, but before that though, I want to thank you all. I've reached 100,000 subscribers and I couldn't be happier. In this celebration, I'm giving away an extra digital copy of Anthem and giving away more copies after this competition ends. Follow the link below. Also, those having any of the following issues in the demo, they are resolved in the full game. Just thought I'd let you know. So let's start with what people have been asking for in the demo. A goddamn team widget. Look here, you can see your teammates' name, armor, shield, status, and direction in the full game. Who would have thought something so simple could be so needed? This is especially useful on higher difficulties when the chaos takes over and you otherwise wouldn't notice your dead friend's direction between the explosions. So did you know that doing certain things will grant you loyalty for factions? The Freelancers, the Arcanists, and the Sentinels are all factions you can rank up with that I know of. It's unclear what exactly loyalty does, but my assumption is higher ranks gives you access to better missions, new areas, and even legendary contracts. Maybe even unique blueprints and items. What is cool though is this, right here. Champion of Tarsus Progress. My assumption is if you gain enough loyalty to do enough late game content, you'll be granted the Champion of Tarsus title and get the benefits that come with it. Maybe unique vanity items. In this case, I got progress towards it by finishing the Temple of Scar Stronghold. So after finishing the Stronghold and getting rank 2 of the Arcanist faction, we get rewarded with the fountain being cleared in Fort Tarsus. I never got to check out what it did, but my assumption is it lets you access new missions. So now I just want to show you how you can over coordinate. Yeah, we piled on that mob a bit too hard here. Kind of feel sorry for him. Now, the flight controls are a bit under scrutiny before the VIP demo, they've since been redeemed. Now, I find a lot of people don't realize how much control you actually have. Most just hold forward and try to wing it. Did you know you can make sharp controlled turns too? Check this out. I fly down, pick up the item and navigate over the rock by pressing and holding back and slowing my speed. You don't need to go full speed through everything. If you aren't great at flying though, and want to be as accurate as possible around the corners, hold forward to go as fast as you need to on the straights, and then when the turns come up, press the aim button to knock yourself into hover. Aim where you need to go, and then press fly again. You'll be zigzagging like a champion in no time. Get good at flying, especially when you play the Ranger, as you can activate your ultimate while flying and do a drive-by missile run that even Tupac would nod to. Rest in peace, my man. When doing this, you can reach more targets than you could otherwise while you were stationary, so it's a high skill maneuver. I want to take some more of your time to express how damn useful freeze effects are. When a storm has your back, there's very little you need to do. Could melee through these basic enemies without firing a shot. In this clip, we see the storm <laughs> keeping both frozen. elite sky and forces frozen, <laughs> letting the whole team combo without taking a speck of damage back, not even a smidgen of damage. The fact that even late game on harder difficulties, status effects apply the same oh. means that these will be very useful. Here we see another elite scar enforcer. As soon as the little guy is frozen, I'm able to target down its weak point without much need to aim, which is you absolutely devastating to me. It... Also, a fun thing to note, enemies can be frozen while mid-air. It makes it hard for your interceptors to get into melee, but everyone else will find it easy to pile on. Note that bosses can be primed too, and that includes the frozen an effect, though the effect seems to only slow them, not freeze them completely, but it still lets you combo off of them. Though this section of the fight you can see the boss is freezing, burning and being electrified, these effects are being quickly burnt to use to combo by the team, which is doing extreme damage. Now freezing is great, but so is burning your enemies alive. Something nice and simple about it. Maybe the simple fact it does more damage. Either way, don't forget the Colossus, Interceptor and Storm have melee attacks that detonate. So these frozen and fire effects, as well as electric and acid, will give you a combo if you have no other way to detonate. However, on those harder difficulties, you will absolutely want to have some way to detonate, as you can see it's really quite effective. Now, your friends can be annoying if they want to be. They can jump right in front of your attacks and block them. Thanks, Javelin25. You've made an enemy for life. There's no friendly fire, but their bodies aren't incorporeal, and they body block you pretty easily. 
but you can teabag him back, so that's fine. To avoid getting teabagged, make sure you dodge sniper fire. Right before the bullet hits you, you'll see the obvious red beam, but the audible bang will happen right before he takes the shot, so time it right and you'll dodge 60% of the time, every time. Snipers and turrets are the most devastating enemies you'll face damage-wise. They'll melt you and your team if they aren't taken care of. A good team will have someone dealing with the snipers first. In this footage, you see the interceptor charge in and tie both snipers up. While the interceptor is up close, the snipers can't fire their rifles and they have to resort to melee attacking. If they're melee attacking, they aren't two-shotting your team. After the snipers are taken care of, the interceptor joins the storm who has rightly frozen the turret to easily take it out with combos. So pile on the snipers unless you're against epic or legendary turrets. Yes, turrets have ranking too, and the higher they are, the higher the priority. This rocket turret, for example, can lock onto you, which your HUD warns you with a visual and audio cue, then fires a quick and highly damaging rocket. I want you to see just how different it is trying to take down priority turrets with and without coordination from your team. First, let's look at this uncoordinated mess. We're all hitting different targets. I see the freeze, so I go for that first, but then I see someone switching to the right and switch as well. It's just not happening. However, now look at the coordinated assault. Get this turret on the right, maybe. Mylan Games asks us to take the turret to the right. I immediately yep. stop attacking my target and fly towards it. GG Man Lives also Frozen. switches up his target and goes for the turret. With our powers combined, we take out the turret in no time. <laughs> Then we naturally proceed to the second one, our combos working together and making it much easier. Typical Aussie slang coming up. Nice, good combos. Are you good bloody good combos, mate? <laughs> oh, fucking chicken sub combo. <laughs> <laughs> Did I mention I hate snipers? The Ranger Shock Maze can be used to prime, then follow up with a missile to finish off the little bastard. If you really hate snipers, bring a Colossus and just pop that shield up every time you see one lining up a shot. You'll either block all its damage or it'll miss completely. Either way, win for you and your health bar. If you really, really hate snipers, any chance to shoot him in the head you should take. Yeah, you're not shooting me today, Junior. Speaking of shooting in the head though, heavy pistols can't be used by the Colossus and their special property is they do exponentially more damage while hitting weak points. Here we see a normal hit of 980 and 1307, then a headshot of 3000. That's around triple the damage. Keep in mind, this is on Grandmaster 1 and this kind of enemy will take a lot longer solo without combos. Now, combo effects are extremely strong and much needed in higher difficulties. However, did you know that shielded targets cannot be primed? Yep. So taking down shields quickly is paramount on annoying targets like enemy Valkyries and Scar Hunters. You can do this with skills that deal high damage and have no prime or detonator effects, or skills that have electric or ice damage types. Arc Lightning from the Storm is particularly good in that sense as it absolutely melts shields. It doesn't have a priming or detonating effect, meaning it can have more damage overall to, to justify not having those effects, and it does electric damage. On higher difficulties or in some missions, having at least one player able to take care of shields will be highly sought after. Destroying shields also has the added effect of knocking the enemy out of the sky or staggering him on the ground. You may have seen the Fury before, but I wanted to note some of its abilities. If left alone, it will create a void around itself which randomly spawns dark energy projectiles at home in and attack all around it. It's absolutely devastating to the team, so don't leave the damn thing alone. This is where shield presser is, is highly needed because so long as the fury has a shield, it will stay in that void. Once it's out, it's much easier to deal with. Up close it has powerful melee sweeps and a range attack that's much less frequent. Use fire and acid effects to burn through its armor fast when its shields are down. So like a few of you have already found out, there's going to be achievements in Anthem. Don't go out and look for the list, it may spoil some things, just know they're there and you can track them. Okay, never forget you aren't restricted to two dimensions. In this clip, we see enemies are storming through the hot gates towards a grounded ranger. The Scar Heavies have shields, so they're well protected from a frontal assault. Instead of accepting the clash, I fly over them and attack them from the back. They then have to deal with fire from both sides, and the Scars are unable to block all of us. It's carnage. Many people don't realize it, but the AI seems to know the weak link of the group and will target them. If you're doing particularly high damage or you're already taking heavy fire, those in range will seemingly prioritize you. 
In this case, we can see all enemies in the area continue to focus me, even though I had retreated and the other members of the party are just as easy to attack. One enemy with no sight of me even avoids my teammate in front of him to start attacking me. They sense blood, which is why it seems like sometimes all the snipers and turrets are just on you, and why your teammates don't notice they are priorities. So check out these fireworks. So you aren't only going to get masterwork and legendary items from rewards, chests, bosses and legendaries. See here this elite scar scrapper. Yes, the, the, the scrappers are basic scars, yet when killed drops a masterwork item. That means there's a loot table for basic enemies and it's not always the best idea to ignore these when you see them in free play. You might not have noticed, but you can shoot the scars heads off as well. Oddly satisfying. I also warn you, if you ever, for whatever reason, find yourself in a room with giant fans, don't walk into them like an idiot. You might get distracted by, say, a giant tank robot and forget there are fans, but don't. They're more dangerous than any tank robot can be. So it turns out you can not only earn coin through missions and playing with friends, but out in the world killing. I'm not exactly sure how I got these, but it seems like enemies drop coin. So with coin you can go about buying cosmetic and vanity items. There clearly is a way to earn them by playing the game. So relax guys. That being said, it might frustrate you to watch just how long it was taking me to kill this elite grenade turret on Grandmaster 1 without the gear and without the combos and coordination. Yep, just keep watching. I'm gonna shut up so you can truly appreciate it. They aren't dying. I don't. Now watch how quick it is on the hard with the right gear and combos. Yeah, very different. You're going to need to make sure you and your team are on point in Grandmaster 1. Keep in mind that the interceptor in both bits of the footage was using the exact same gear. You also may have noticed some weapons have drastically less ammo, like the Devastator sniper rifle. If you charge the shot, it explodes for well devastating damage. You can see here I could easily take on an elite machine gun turret with only four shots, with the fourth being overkill. When you have this gun, you can try to make friends with the local wildlife without fear. Maybe even take a picture. The best thing about the sniper is though, you can steal your teammates kills like a pro. Did I say kill steal? I, I meant secure kills. Yep, that's, that's what I meant. So thanks for watching guys. Thank you for your support and keep your eyes peeled on social media for more. I'll be back very soon.